Super Street, the game, the newly announced racing franchise, which has left us with more questions than answers. Well, at least that was the case up until now. You see, in my last video, you might remember I actually called them out. Look, Super Street, listen, I know you're watching this video, guys. Let's sit down, me and you, around the table, face to face. I basically explained how I wanted more answers, how the community needed more answers, and people basically needed their worries and fears put at rest. And guess what? They responded. They responded soon after seeing the video. Their community manager, Valentine, hit me up on my Gmail inbox and said, hey, born. We saw your video, bro. How about you jump on a Skype call one day and uh, we have it out. We have a conversation. We talk. I said, yo, all right, cool. I'm down. Basically, we had quite a long discussion, around about 45 minutes in total. And it just gave me the opportunity to ask a lot of questions that you guys have been asking in comment sections, not only on my video, but also on other people's videos as well. Now, originally, the format upon how I wanted to do this was basically just record my screen and record my vocal and have it going back and forth. Unfortunately, at the end, I realized that my screen capturing software had crashed and so it just didn't work. So the way in which I'm gonna present this to you guys is in the form of an audio format. I was prepared for the worst, the worst happened, and luckily, or quite smartly, looking back at it, I had my phone actually recording my vocal and Super Street developers' vocals as well during the conversation, okay? Obviously, there's gonna be a bit of echo in at times, there's gonna be a bit of reverb, I'm so, so sorry about that, guys, but it's still clear enough for you to make out the actual conversation. It's My voice sounds perfectly fine, but it's just that on their end, it sounds a little bit echoey. Nevertheless, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this up into two videos. As I said, the call was around 45 minutes long. I'm not gonna do one long 45-minute video. I'm gonna drop one half of it today and probably one half of it tomorrow so sit back and enjoy it nowadays is uh it's a more like vehicle destruction uh when you look at the current games a lot of them we felt were a bit uh yeah you couldn't really destroy your car so we decided uh what can we do with super Street? how can we make do something entirely different and we decided it was uh, very cool to bring that uh, kind of uh more classic old arcade kind of destruction back so in Super Street, the game, for example, if you crash into uh, something, your car will totally yeah. spatter. Uh, it will, yeah. The wheels will fly off. Uh, it's like every time we were uh, looking at the structure, we were discussing here totally how can we do it better and make it even, yeah, more spectacular. So we try to do a lot of that to make it as cool as possible we can. Right. Yeah. Because um, I think the whole um, premise of damage being slowly but surely phased out of racing games is something that has upset quite a lot of people. And um, I guess that leads me on to the second question. Um, what was it that made you guys, well, I presume, I could be wrong on this, but first and foremost, are we in a situation where we can confirm that there's no licensed cars in the game, first and foremost? Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the, the big question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because we read all, all, of, all of, you know, all the comments yeah. from your followers and everybody. And uh, I think that's number one question is, you know, are there licensed cars in the game? Uh, like Valentine said, from the beginning we said that with the guys over at Super Street, um, we, we were talking about, you know, what does this game need to be, right? And then we set up the, the different pillars like Valentine said, so it's, you know, customization all the way, because that's Super Street. You know? yeah, it's, yeah. it's cars and women, basically. <laughs> and um, so customization was definitely number one. The, the second one was, you know, the classic arcade experience that we felt this was really missing, and, you know, it fits the whole uh, tuning community very well. Um, and then, you know, we had the, um, the destruction, and that was something in, in no, no, no way we were going to miss that one. Yeah. And doing destruction at the level we're doing, like in the old days of, of you know, a burnout, need to speed on the ground, um, bringing that back means you need true deformation of your car, parts flying off, you know, not just one or two scratches. Yeah, yeah. And, um, no, well, guess what? The big car brands don't like that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And um, for us, it was almost a no-brainer. It was a really, really tough decision, though, because we know that everybody really loves licensed cars. But for us, we wanted to do the whole customization, which is also part, for example, the engine swapping. Yeah. The big brands don't like that either. Right, right, right. And when you start stacking all, all those things on which we build a game upon, and then you have, then you have the question of licensed car, no licensed cars, at the end of the day, we can confirm there are no licensed cars. Okay. But um, there's a big but in this whole situation, because when you will see the cars, you know, you'll be like, oh, wait a minute, isn't that... Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it yeah. Looked, really looked like it, 
but um, it, at the end of the day, it is an official a licensed car. But the fun part about it is when you start customizing your car, uh, and you know, if you look at the Chewy community, you know, they transform their car in so many ways. They do. You see the original model. Yeah. So that's what also one of our things, you know, is it, is it, if it's going to be about customization, yeah. um, you will transform in any way as much as you can. So at the end of the day, you will mm. see, you will look at the car like, hey, this yeah. might be that sort of model, but it's not official. And yeah, it's all about building the car you want to build. So you start with a base model and then part by part you start choosing the car you want. So if you want to choose that kind of brake, that kind of wheel, that kind of body kit, it all depends on you as a player what you want. That's right. how we build the game. Um, I guess one thing that I wanted to understand a bit more, and this is based on some of the stuff that I've read from what you guys have put out. Um, you mentioned the fact that you start off you don't buy your car, you build it, and you start off with a base model. How exactly does that work? And when we talk about base model, what what are we talking about in terms of starting out? Yeah, we wanted to do it a little bit different than you do in the other car games, right? So uh, in Super Street, the, uh, the game, you start off with a piece of junk. You know, it's oh, so rusty, it will barely drive. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of people uh, can relate to that because, yeah. you know, you'll never buy your ultimate car the first time you buy your car. Yeah, yeah. And the one that's that's one of the things we restarted from. Mm. And uh, also a very big difference between all the other games is that the car you choose at the beginning, that will be your car for the rest of the game. Right. So um, we don't have like 40 or 50 different cars. Um, you will start with one piece of junk, basically, and you start customizing it all up into, you know, as you progress during the game, and you'll start picking out your car more, you know, engine swapping, interior, exterior, just the way you like it to be, just like real life, basically. Mm. And that's, I think, is a big difference that we do with a, a lot of other games. Something also cool to mention, uh, I guess, is uh, when you uh, play the game and you uh, earn money, you have the freedom to uh, customize whatever you want. So, for example, you start with your scrap car and you can decide yourself, am I going to start with a new wheel? Am I going to get that new engine that you want? It's all up to you which part you're going to... Uh, I replace first. Yeah. Like with this game, we really wanted to get close to the community and actually like resemble the experience you have as a car enthusiast. Yeah. Because yeah. if you uh, get a car yourself, and you're like, you're not going to get the big uh, supercar yeah. or the, the biggest things or everything uh, right at the start. You're going to do it step by step. Yeah. And that's important the thing because all the car parts uh, are unlocked from the beginning. So oh, wow. As you, yeah. So as you progress through the game, you don't need to unlock any car parts. So every car part that fits your car, you choose. Uh, is available from the very start. It's only up to you to you know to make the decision on will I save up for the big engine and you know leave my car uh, rusty and crappy, or I'm going to look at the exterior first and then go into the whole modification for the performance, for example. Yeah. It's all up to you. You're, you're the tuner. Yeah. We, we don't decide what you want to do. Awesome. Um, oh wow, that's just led off to some other questions as well. Um, so you know what you said about how you don't buy your car obviously it's that one car that you have from start to finish yeah. is there an opportunity for the player to own more than one car so can they have like a garage and have like maybe two three four different cars or is it yeah. just going to be the one it's going to be one car but you know we understand that you want some variety as well right so um, during the game um, we have events and in all, every event, you know, you have several missions, and those events are, are also sponsored by the biggest car influencers on Instagram. You know, they love our ID, and you know, we love that what they're doing for the whole car tuning community. So we teamed up, and you know, you have the, one of the events is played in, in one of those brands, etc., etc. And um, so you, we also have those sponsor cars. So in every event, you will have one certain sponsor car that's unique. It's you know, fully customized, you have different experiences from driving your own car. Um, and then we also have the click, quick play function. Uh, when you quick play, you can choose out tons of different cars if you ever want to try a different one. But in the game, the career mode itself, you will just stick with one car. So, you know, be wise in your decision. Also good to add there is for the multiplayer, you can play with all the cars. Right. So you can choose the eight different cars from the beginning uh, and choose a version. You can play with sponsor cars, you unlock. And you can also, of course, play with your own creation, uh, your own car that you customize the way you did it yourself. Awesome, awesome. So, obviously, with um, the game itself, how does it work in terms of um, 
DLC and stuff like that. So I'll give you a better example of what I mean. If you look at, um, well, one of your rivals, I should say, Need for Speed Payback, um, they're in a bit of a difficult situation because the game obviously released, I think it was maybe seven or eight months ago. And as you can, you've probably seen by the way the community has been acting, there's hardly been any meaningful downloadable content for a while so the game has kind of gone cold do you guys have like a, a roadmap in place to keep the game alive for a long period of time because um what i personally wouldn't want to see is us in a situation where you've got this fantastic game and then it just falls off the cliff after four four months so to speak yeah no, we completely agree with you also uh, like how we like to see it is we see the release of the game kind of as the start like, uh, we're getting a lot of uh, feedback from over from the guys over at the Motorturn group, from the community, from you guys. So we want to keep polishing and adding stuff like as we go. So uh, we have plans to uh, keep on adding stuff and uh, also it's good to know uh, for your fans, for example, uh, if they have wishes for the game, drop their comments, uh, share those emails, uh, share their wish with us. And can always see what we can do for them. Because in the end, we want to make a game that's loved by the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. Um, I think it's also, it's, we're looking at it from uh, the moment we you know, announced the game, it was in November last year, right? Yeah. And we are an indie developer, so we don't have those huge budgets. Obviously. Like the crew who will spend like two million bucks just on the trailer. So every dollar we have, you know, it goes into the game. From that point on, you know, we had the announcement in November and we got so much positive feedback from the community and everybody behind it. Everybody was hyped. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were hyped already, but we didn't expect this much of an attention. Yeah. So one of the things we did um, is we started hiring other people as well, you know, from AAA games, like Forza, you know, Project Cars, all those stuff. Oh, to right. make sure that, you know, we want to deliver a better experience than we initially, initially even thought, right? Um, so, as an indie developer, this is like a huge opportunity for yeah, us. Yeah. And like Valentine said, we can do so much up until the release, and the guys from the development, they're hauling ass, you know, they're doing everything they can, but at the end of the day, the release will be our start, and from that point on, you know, with all the feedback, just like Valentine just said, we'll be adding more stuff and doing updates on uh, the game for sure. You've just answered, well, you've half answered my next question, which is really, really great. Um, it was going to be, when I started this interview, in my head, I wasn't sure if I should ask this, but I'm going to ask it anyway, because I think it's best to be open and transparent. Um, as you've probably seen through all the comments and certain YouTubers' videos, Team 6, this history is causing people a little bit of concern and whatnot and i think the fact that you've just mentioned that you've actually gone so far as to hire people from such credible motoring franchises is going to put so many people's minds at rest um was that part of the reason as to why you decided to do that and i guess the question i'm asking is what kind of things can you do to put confidence or what kind of things can you say to put confidence in people who have those negative connotations already what what message can we can we can we say to them um, we get where it's coming from, right? So T6 as a company, we've, we've been existing for quite some time. Yeah. Um, when we started to do Super Street, T6 is usually a company that did work for hire. So we did jobs for other publishers. Looking at Super Street, we want to do it differently. So we started our own publishing company. So we were not, you know, um, reliant on the decisions that have been made from all the other publishing companies and you know, basically doing what they're telling us to do. We wanted to have more freedom to develop a game in our own way. So we started our own publishing company. Uh, so, you know, we had the freedom to develop it in the way we want. Now, of course, uh, like I just said, we don't have the budget of the Ubisoft and the EA Sports, but at least with the budget now we're having, uh, we can do a game that we feel comfortable with and with more our way. And um, I think that's a really big difference uh, compared to the previous games we were doing uh, earlier on. No. Um, how do you guys feel about people comparing this to or seeing it as a potential Midnight my, uh, midnight Club successor, so to speak? Well, of course, it puts on a lot of pressure because it was a great title, of course, in the past. It's always hard to say, like, we're going to be the next uh, kind of title like that. Yeah. Of course, when we started developing the game, we looked at uh, certain classics and Midnight Club LA was one of the uh, titles we looked into. So we tried to take good elements of it and take into Super Street the game. It's always hard to say like how we compare or mm. yeah. 
Yes, there's, there's you know elements definitely from those games as well. Trying to bring it more current, mm -hmm. and also you know looking at and listening to the wishes of the community, and also of course you know what's very important to us is our relationship with the guys over at Super Street. Mm -hmm. So we try to mix that all that stuff and create a pretty cool game. Okay. Um, next question, Super Street the game, um, the way that I and many other people see it is this is potentially the game for car fanatics, if that makes sense. And obviously, as you've quite rightly said, there's a huge real life car community that goes all around the world, Asia, America, Europe, wherever you are, there are people who love cars. One of the biggest things that people talk about nowadays are car meets and stuff like that. Um, you may have seen a video I put out doing a whole car meet based sort of solution based idea. Have we got or have you guys got any plans to have some sort of car meet based activity in the game, which is more than just people having to free roam and meet up manually? Is there going to be any plans for any activities and stuff like that that are in tune with what what you see in the magazine itself? If that makes sense. It's definitely an idea we like. Okay. <laughs> okay. Embargo. <laughs> ah. Microtransactions. Oh, no. Okay. No, we, we don't even believe in that. Brilliant. Okay, cool. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, don't support that kind of uh, actions. That's We're great. We're here for ourselves, you know, and yeah. you, know, you don't want to do stuff to other people you don't like yourself. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand. Um, so, would there be like a, a season pass at all? Or is it just. No, it's not something we're, we're aiming for at the moment. Uh, like you said, you know, the release is something we're focusing on right mm -hmm. now. Um, and, you know, continue to develop the game. And from that point on, maybe we'll do some DLCs, pay DLCs later on. But it's definitely not our priority. We okay. just want to bring the best experience to. Uh, to the, you know, to the people who can play the game. Yeah, yeah. It's about making a game people will like and love, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the first step, and then if they like them, can always see from there. Yeah. Awesome. Um, with other franchises that have been out for a little while, they've established themselves in a way whereby they've now got um, what you call cycles, release cycles. So, for example, the Horizon series is every two years. Um, Payback, uh, sorry, Need for Speed, I believe, is every two years or so. And I think the crew... Well, this is their second game, but I think the first title was four years ago. With Super Street, the game, obviously, I know this game hasn't been released yet, and you're probably not even thinking about the second one, but what is the longevity that you guys are looking for with this game? Is it a case of just sort of just seeing how it goes and keeping it going, or is it like a short cycle, then the next one, then the next one? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, first of all, we need to see how successful Super Street is going to be, right? right? And um, it also depends on the guys over at Super Street. Uh, because you know, at the end of the day, it, it's their license, and we would love. Um, and the way it looks right now, you know, it, it's going to be a long-term partnership. But at the end of the day, it's all about you know contracts and you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, the success of the game, and if it seems to be successful, we can definitely. We are looking forward to to looking up to to other games as well. Mm. In relation to the press release that got put out, um, obviously you guys alluded to the fact that there's going to be, I think it was five different types of environments within the game itself. Um, that's obviously left a lot of people confused, in a good way. Um, is there any light you could shed on exactly what that means? In terms, Is it surface types? Is it road types? I think it's first good to tell a bit about the, uh, the layout of the game, where you're going to play it. Okay. Uh, when you play Super Street the game, uh, like we said, you start out with a very scrappy, rusty car. And from there you have to play through several events to earn more reputation and earn more money. And all those events are uh, divided into missions, and all those missions take place over those five environments. So for every mission you are going to race in one of the environments in one of the tracks there. Right. That's uh, kind of how the game is built. Okay. And also, uh, while we created the environments, we wanted to uh, kind of... Uh, yeah, a match what you do with your car, like how you start from, uh, yeah, from a very scrappy car uh, to a tuner car, also try to match it with the environments. So when you start out with the game, you uh, start in a more like sub area, more uh, slum, yeah, kind of slum uh, kind mm -hmm. of area. And then from there you kind of step up your game and you start going to better cities uh, ah. and better places. And also there's some uh, variety there on the maps, because of course we wanted to keep it fresh and yeah. uh, give some uh, variety of playing. Mm.
And there you have it, guys. That was part one of the interview that I had when I got the chance to sit down and speak over Skype to the developers of Super Street, the game. Now, some very interesting points to take away there. First and foremost, those of you that were worried about Team Six's reputation, well, it's good to shed a little light on how they've actually got together with other people from more reputable racing franchises, such as Forza, such as Project Cars. These are triple A gaming titles, and people that have worked on those games are working alongside Team 6 to make this game. I thought it was also great to hear that there will be no microtransactions in this game. You've heard it, they've given you their word, they absolutely hate the idea. Don't want to talk too much more because the rest of it is there for you to listen on the playback. What I will say guys, do not forget this is part one. Very important that you take that on board. There is a part two to this that I will be dropping within the next 24 hours. Hit the subscribe button, turn your notifications on so you know exactly when that comes out so I can give you some more first hand and information on what to expect from Super Street the game. If it's your first time around here, I wish you a born welcome and I'll see you when the next video comes out. Take it easy, peace.